Welcome everyone to another Marvel Crisis Pro Call unboxing. So today, as you can clearly see, it's Gamora and Nebula. So I think these two models uh, look quite cinematic in the poses. Uh, they definitely are not the kind of fighters just to stand there, take a hit, remain stationary, like um, like Drax, for example. Uh, you know, he just stands there, takes a hit, gives a hit. Uh, that's his pose. He's very, very, very kind of static. Whereas these guys, you can almost imagine them leaping around, especially Nebula leaping off whatever debris that is supposed to be. So yes, um, they're very much like they are in the films. And I have to admit, until recently, I never even checked out any of the Guardians comics. So, on the back, as per usual, it gives a little bit of a blurb of what each character has so, we have adopted by Thanos, Gamora was raised to be the fiercest warrior in the galaxy and served as the Mad Titans um, and served the Mad Titan in his goals of conquest. So, in the comics, um, Gamora's race was pretty much wiped out when Thanos found her. But in the films, Thanos wiped out half of her race because that's what he did. And then he went on to find the Infinity Gauntlet or the Infinity Stones to do it on a mass scale. But yeah, he used to go around, um, if you um, go with the films rather than the comics, wiping out half of each planet uh, in an attempt to... <sighs> the bigger picture, you know, if you wipe out half of the species on each planet, there's more food to go around, more wealth, things like that. So was Thanos right? Well, there's a question for another day. I don't want to get into mass murder that's not my thing at all. It's not real, people. It's not real. Um, but that's what happened in the films. But in the comics, uh, way back in 1975, when he first came across Gamora, her actual species uh, was pretty much wiped out already, and she was the last of her species. Uh, so I can't really pronounce her species name, but in the comics, the species was Zen Wolbergeris, or something like that. Um, so... Uh, they were exterminated by uh, Badadun, um, and Thanos did find her, and he trained her up as a weapon, but obviously in the comics, he's the one that kind of peed her off from the word go, biggest killed half of her race. Um, but yeah, pretty much the rest is history, pretty much is the same. She is just an expert uh, marksman, martial artist, brilliant hand-to-hand -hand combat, she is possibly the deadliest woman in the galaxy, or so the title goes. So, she wasn't originally with the Guardians, very much like in the films. She didn't start off that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, she later obviously became part of the Guardians. Um, her and Star-Lord fell in love. But not much has changed really between the comics and the films for Gamora. Of course, in the films, she was played by the beautiful uh, Zoe Zardana, uh, who is believable as being utterly fierce. You can imagine her kicking some butt. Um, and she is supposed to be beautiful in the comics. And she does have a few um, slight cybernetic enhancements, but not as much as her stepsister Nebula, which we'll go into in a second. Um, but yeah, each time she took any injuries, obviously she had a slight modification, but the majority of the time she won most of her fights. And that was part of Thanos' go, training her up to be the ultimate assassin, and hopefully seeking uh, revenge on the Magus, which is the evil version, future version of Adam Warlock, which hopefully we'll get to see in Marvel Crisis Protocol, and it'd be nice to have him on the Guardians team. But that's a story for another day. So next we get to Nebula. So Nebula uh, is a pirate and a mercenary. Nebula was raised alongside Gamora, uh, Gamora as Thanos' adopted daughter. Fueled by jealousy of her sister, Nebula has become feared across several star systems with her ruthless nature and willingness to work with anyone to accomplish their goals. And she certainly has a lot more cybernetic enhancements than Gamora. Those cybernetic enhancements came from each time um, she lost a fight with Gamora uh, while training, because Thanos used to pit them against each other. 
and every time she failed a mission, Thanos thought it was wise to upgrade her in some way. I say upgrade in quotation marks. Uh, she lost more and more of her humanity, if there was much there to begin with, uh, because she was quite a ruthless person to begin with. Like I said, she was a bit of a pirate. Um, so, in the comics, uh, Thanos eventually got hold of her, and he modified her himself quite a bit, uh, and kept her pretty much like a mindless zombie doing his bidding. Um, whenever he willed it, he would basically command her to do things against her will. Uh, so the hatred was there all the time. I mean, she had hatred for her sister, or stepsister, Gamora. Certainly hatred for Thanos, because she couldn't do what she wanted. And she never felt like she was good enough when in Gamora's shadow. But, in the comics, she eventually did uh, get the gauntlet, the Infinity Gauntlet, off of Thanos. Can you imagine that in the, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Nebula with the gauntlet. That would have been a good what-if, right? But there is a little bit of good in her somewhere. There really is. There's still a little bit of humanity because Gamora and Nebula did shake hands. They did build some bridges, but there's always that tension between them. But yeah, she started off as a pirate and she eventually became good herself. So Gamora, Gamora always had more heart. She, uh, she always felt for her species that was pretty much extinct. Um... And she became good, but Nebula took a little bit longer because that woman was all kinds of nasty, even before she was tinkered with. Right, enough about the fluff. It's interesting though, um, Nebula was around quite a bit after Gamora in the comics. Because uh, it was uh, like mid-80s, like 85 Nebula was in. Um, like I said, she was a bit more of a space pirate initially than she was anything to do with Gamora. So it took a while for her to come along with stories. So the Guardians as we know it in the films, like Rocket and Groot and things like that, they didn't start off together. They had their own individual stories and they all kind of bound them together. James Gunn did a very, very good job of that. Right, okay. So what do we get in the box? Enough about the fluff, Ross. Shut up. We have a Gamora miniature. That's nice to know. A Nebula miniature. There's a surprise. Two bases, two character stack cards, two team tactics cards, and 10 tokens. So starting with the character cards. So Gamora has changed a little bit. So these are the cards that came in the box, but there has been an update since then. So we'll get to the differences in these cards in a second. The very first difference is the very first stat. So on the card, she has five health, but on the upgraded new edition, updated one, it is six. So she's gained one extra health, but still good. Uh, six health, long move, size two. She costs four. Uh, defenses are three physical, three energy, and three mystic. Her attacks are actually quite impressive as well. So when you first see the stat line, you think, okay, it's range two, so you get pretty close. Uh, but it's six dice, which is more than the average. But, you know, she is the deadliest woman in the galaxy. So it's a physical attack. This is God Slayer. So it's got to be pretty good with that title, right? After this attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the amount of damage dealt. Standard. If this attack has dealt damage after the attack is resolved, the target character gains the bleed condition. So you don't have to get a wild or anything to make it happen. That's strong. So as long as they're not immune to bleed, they're bleeding after the attack. So as long as it's dealt at least one point of damage, I think that's really good. I think that's strong. Um, so she's gonna gain power from it and someone's gonna be bleeding, which is always, always good. So really good to have near Drax because Drax gets to reroll against someone who's bleeding as well. So if someone is still alive after Gamora has stabbed them and they're bleeding, Drax is probably going to come up and he's going to do some work. Right, this is Cosmic uh, Assassin. So it's range three, a little bit more range, still six dice, but it costs four. So for four, what do you get that's much different from her God Slayer? So you get Pierce on a Wild, which we'll come back to later on. 
So Pierce is always good, so you get to change one of your defending characters crits, hits, or shields into a blank. So if someone's defending against you and you do get that wild, you're going to be reducing one of their defense dice. So let's say the average is three, they're rolling three dice, two of them happens to be a success, and you get a wild, you stop one of them. That's pretty nice, that's not bad in itself, but hold on, there's more. We have Rapid Strike. After this attack is resolved, this character may make an additional Cosmic Assassin attack without paying the power cost. The additional attack must target another character within range 2 of the original target and may be any distance from this particular character. So any distance from Gamora, but as long as it's within 2 of the original target, this attack does not obviously generate in the additional Rapid Strike, because then she would go on for days and wouldn't stop. Um, that's impressive. So there's two models within that range 2, she gets to attack them twice. Well, technically attack them both. So two attacks for the price of four power, which is pretty good. So she's remained stationary, and those two models still aren't dead. She can do that again. Really, really good. I like that. I think that's strong. So the first lot of her powers is Assassin Leap. Cost two. This character is thrown small. If this character collides with another Character or terrain feature, this character does not suffer damage. Superpower going to be used once per activation. So I like people like Cable, for example, that has body slide by one. Uh, you get to move somebody uh, range two, and it costs two power. This is better, because you're moving them small, and you're throwing them, technically. So you're not just moving them. They're throwing, and she doesn't suffer any impact damage from that. So if you're colliding with somebody, they're going to take damage, and then you're going to use, let's say, Cosmic Assassination, and there's someone next to them, they get to hit again. Yeah, really, 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 really good. So, the second one is Martial Prowess. So none of these have changed. In the new update, none of these have changed. When this character is targeted by an attack within range 2, it may use this superpower instead of rolling dice equal to its defense, so it'll be free across the board. It rolls five dice, which is always better anyway, right? If this character suffers no damage from the attack, after the attack is resolved, the character suffers two damage. Flat two damage. So if someone's only got two health left, uh, play this card. You're rolling five dice, so it's two dice more than you would normally, which is always nice anyway. If you take damage, you take damage but you're rolling more defense dice, so it increases your odds. But, if you don't take damage, you've killed that model. They've only got two health left. Boom. Brilliant. I like that. She literally is the deadliest woman in the, gar uh, in the garage. Yeah, the deadliest woman in the garage. In the garage may be inside the galaxy. Um, but that's brutal. You know, it really does make you think twice. Do I really want to do this? So if you're going to hit her... Hit her outside of range 2. Which we'll get back to in a second. Uh, Deadly Woman, uh, Deadliest Woman in the Galaxy is an actual innate superpower. When this character makes an attack, it may change one hit dice um, that has a hit to a wild automatically. So it's only one. But basically, it only affects her cosmic assassination. So if you do roll your 6 dice for Cosmic Assassination and you didn't get a wild, turn one of those hits that you surely you've rolled out of 6 dice into wild and gaining pierce. That's solid. So it increases her chance of getting pierce. So initially I thought 4 power, rolling 6 dice. If someone's not close to a team member, you're only hitting one target, okay, mm, it's, it's okay. But the chances that you're going to get that pierce off is really, really good. So also, in the new updated rules, she has stealth. So for those who don't know, characters must be within range 3 uh, to target this character. So the chances of someone getting the martial prowess off and you get getting within range 2 is more likely. So you can't shoot her... Uh, range 5, range 4, you have to get within 3, but don't get within 2. 
That's the secret of dealing with a Gamora. Not much of a secret, but you know, there it is. On the injured side, nothing has changed on there. But once again, on the injured side, on the update, she still has stealth and she has six health. So overall, she's gained two health one on the back, one on the front, and she's gained stealth. So overall, a little bit more survivable. So Gamora, attacker within three, but not within two. And I think she's going to do some work. I think she's pretty nasty. So her, her defensive tech, initially, you don't think she's massively survivable for cost four. But with stealth, that really does help. And with six health on front and back, she is a little bit more survivable than you would think. Uh, and the fact that she's got that assassination leap and with long movement... So if you don't want to use a long movement and someone is within long, use the assassination leap, throw yourself at them, do damage against them, then attack them. Brilliant. But if you really need that long movement to grab an objective rather than killing stuff, use it. It's brilliant. Long move is so, so good. Next we have Nebula. So Nebula's card hasn't changed at all. Does that mean she's an utter badass and she doesn't need to change a card? I'll let you decide. So Nebula has certainly less health than Gamora. So rather than 6, she only has 4. Long range, again. Size 2, again. But she's only a cost 2. And cost 2s are quite rare in Guardians because, alright, you've got Rocket, who's um, cost 2. But are you really going to take Rocket without group? So effectively, Rocket is always a 5 in my opinion. So this is the only two that you've got for Guardians. That's that's my excuse, I'm sticking to it. So nothing's changed for her, and she has a strike, like most people do. So it's range two, four dice, zero cost. So she certainly doesn't hit as hard as Gamora. After his attack is over, this character gains power equal to the amount of damage dealt. Standard. She gets a wild, she has shock. So characters suffering from the shock condition Roll one less dice on attack rolls. For those who don't know. Um, so already, all right, she's half the cost. Um, but she's le two less dice, and she doesn't auto get a condition. She has to get a wild to pull off that condition. But not out yet. We still have other attacks. So Gamora has two attacks. She has three attacks with Nebula. This is an energy attack. So, at least she's got some tricks in her toolbox. Not all about the physical. She has got some energy in there as well. So if you're going against someone like uh, Venom, who doesn't like being attacked by energy, but he does like being attacked by physical, at least it gives you some options. This is a range 3. It's 4 dice, also 0 cost. After this attack is resolved, this character gains 1 power. So, if you want a little bit more range and someone's a little bit squishy against um, energy, eh, not, not a bad attack. You're not going to get shock off, granted, but you get your one power. So if you really, really need to get one power, doesn't matter if you do any damage, that's okay. That's all right. Third attack is, once again, a energy attack, shock, sword, assault, which bugs me, because I'll tell you about it in a second. Range 3, 6 dice, that's more like it, but it costs 3 power. After this attack is resolved, place this character within one of the target. So movement tech, long reach, and can bounce off of that model within range 1. Maybe you need to get onto an objective, it's really, really nice. Because it's range 3, so you might not be close enough on that objective, but you are close enough to hit somebody on the objective, then you can land on it. Nice, right? But, I'll tell you something about that in a second, normally that's a brilliant, brilliant play. On a wild, she has stun. After the attack is resolved, the character suffers from the stun condition. So stun is, you cannot generate power so much. So if you would take 3 damage, normally you would gain 3 power from taking that damage, but you only take 1. So you still always gain 1, but, you know... It's more an inconvenience. Someone who really relies on power, 
like, I don't know, Strange, it doesn't have a gem on him, or uh, Magneto, you know, he really likes lots of power. Um, it stuns pretty good. It stuns, it stuns pretty good. But I would rather have something like Shock, or, I don't know, it being a Shock attack. Um, shock should be in there and baked in. Shock, Sword, Assault should have Shock, right? That's just me. A mild, mild inconvenience. Uh, so she has got three powers, all of which she doesn't have to pay for. So if she does gain any power, all it's going into is the Shock, Sword, Assault. So the fa uh, first power, which is baked in, is Assassin. This character cannot contest, interact, or hold objective tokens. So that move I mentioned earlier on, things like that you can do with beasts. You can attack somebody within range 3 and then land on the objective. Brilliant. But this particular character, it can't happen. So she's all about killing. She can never interact with any of the objectives. But additionally, this character may reroll any number of attack dice when it's atta attacking a character that's holding or contesting an objective. Which sounds like, okay, some characters are going to do that. But no. Every character should be playing the game. They should be either going for an objective token to secure or the holding one. So basically, she gets to free roll all of her dice against anybody interacting or holding an objective. Because it says reroll any number of its dice. So presumably not skulls. Because unless stated otherwise, you can never re-roll skulls. So there's no point in putting a winging it token on her. Because majority of the time, she's rolling four dice when attacking. I mean, you could put winging it on there. Let's say you roll four dice. One's a skull. One's a hit. And two are blanks. You get to re-roll those two. Brilliant. And you get one more out of that. Brilliant. You can use a winging it, I suppose. So she's got less number of dice that she's throwing but she is more accurate. So Gamora hits harder, Nebula hits more accurate. So in my head, it's the fact that she's got two short swords and she's more nimble, lots and lots of little cuts rather than one big cut. That's just in my head. Right, Cybernetic Enhancements. This character may re-roll one dice in its defensive rolls. Nice. Additionally, at the start of this character's activation, you remove one damage from it. So sadly, um, it's not healing factor, because if that was the case, I would definitely bring the card that negates damage with models that have healing factor. It was one of my favourite cards, that's why I generally put an X-23, or a Wolverine in my list, or a Deadpool in my list, or a Sabretooth in my list, just as it's more survival. Somebody throws a massive building at you, or somebody does 8 points of damage, nope, sorry, only suffer 1 point of damage. Sadly... It's kind of like it, but it's at the beginning. But rerolling one defensive dice is always nice anyway. So, all right, she is 3-3-2, three, three, which isn't fantastic against Mystic, for example. But rerolling one dice could help sometimes. I mean, if you've got Wing in it and you want to be more defensive with Nebula, for whatever reason, I mean, like I said, she's not holding objectives, so I would say she's a bit more of a throwaway kind of character. But... Yeah, if you you wanted to survive because you wanted to kill more, then yeah, do it. So re-roll two for winging it, and then re-roll one because she gets to re-roll one. Always, always nice. So she has immunity to bleed because, after all, she isn't entirely all organic, I guess. Immune to uh, poison and immune to stun. So certain characters out there, like Omega Red, can deal damage for people suffering from poison. Stun... Stun's pretty good, um, but she doesn't really need the power. She's really, really um, power savvy because she's only got one thing she can actually use her power on. On the injured side, she has from 4 health to 5 health because I'm guessing you made her slightly angry. Um, but other than that, she's exactly the same. So it's the kind of character, if you have two points available, use her. Um, I'm going to use her because I think she's just a cool model um, and I like her in the films I'm a massive fan of Karen Gilligan but that's a 
something I'm not going to get into. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think she's a cool model. You're not going to worry about her too much because you don't care about the objectives while playing her. You're just going to throw her at somebody. If she kills them, if she kills them, you would definitely throw her at someone who is holding an objective or is contesting an objective. So she's going to be re-rolling those dice. Um, but yeah, the hardest hitting thing she's got is a six strength attack. Mm, I don't think it's all that. I mean, you've got six dice and you get to re-roll against them if they are holding the objective. Yeah, it could be okay. And stun is a bit of a meh kind of condition, but it's better than no condition at all, right? Um, the fact that she can be placed within one of that target afterwards, it's pretty nice. So she's going to be bouncing around. Uh, if there's a few characters out there that are already injured, um, she could attack somebody with the Shock Sword Assault within range 3, end within one of that person, let's say they've killed it, and there's someone else within 3, you're jumping to another side of the table, doing the same thing. If someone's going to concentrate fire on her, brilliant. She's not holding the objective, she's not scoring me anything for 2 points. Yeah, why not? But I don't think I'm going to put her in my main Guardians list. I think it's literally, if I need to, make the affiliation. Or, if I just have a spare two points. So, in the pack, obviously, you get your instructions. Uh, and being one of the newer packs, uh, what was this, uh, 16, was it? Uh, yep, yeah, so this was episode 16, I guess. Um, there are no numbers on there, but it is a pretty straightforward... Assembly guideline. So two halves of a body, two bits of a head. It is not high tech at all. It's pretty easy to work out what's going on with these models. Uh, Gamora, she's on half a page, so she takes up even less. So once again, two halves of a body. They're going to be quite fun. They're going to be quite fun. I don't remember her wearing uh, white armor, Gamora, in the films, but I quite like the white armor. And I know this is more based on the comics than the films, but I generally pick which one I prefer. So Storm, I put her in a white outfit rather than the black because of the cartoons. But yeah, it literally depends on what I think looks cooler. Uh, it said two bases, or actually, as per usual, it's four bases. It's pretty nice. And don't forget the bottles and the crunkle up cans and things like that. Always nice to have on the bases. Um, because they're quite cinematic, you might want to use the flatter bases, possibly. Uh, so you get tokens as well, don't forget. So you, your Guardians tokens, you have your Shock tokens, Stun tokens, and a Bleed token. The models themselves are actually quite dainty. So I know they're supposed to be size 2. They are slim, athletic ladies. Not hulking brutes, but there's some nice detail, especially on the chest plate there. So the armoured sections around the stomach. That's pretty nice. Uh, Nebula here has her two very cyberpunk swords. I do like them. That's the piece of terrain she's jumping off. Look how tiny the two halves of her head is. So I'll definitely enjoy painting them up. Um, whether or not I will play Nebula, yeah. In this box comes two Team Tactics cards. Now, sadly, Medpack is no longer a thing. It's taken me this long to get Medpack, and now it's not a thing. Which is a shame. I spend two power to play this card, remove up to three damage from a character or an allied character with a Days token within range three. That was a shame, because that was a real, real nice card. But that was almost in everybody's lists. Um, that got pretty messy. It got pretty messy. Sometimes you thought you had the upper hand. You're about to wipe somebody out, and someone plays that card. It's happened to me. Um, but fair play on my opponent at the time. It, it was a Hail Mary, and it paid off. It really did. So we have Daughters of Thanos. Unaffiliated, reactive. When either an allied Gamora or an allied Nebula makes an attack action, after the attack is resolved, 
both characters may spend two power to play this card. The characters, Gamora and Nebula, the obviously, uh, that did not make the initial attack may make an attack targeting the same character. So, I don't know, Gamora's gone up there and smashed somebody. Um, Nebula can then make a an extra attack, basically. That's pretty nice if you really, really have to kill somebody. It's pretty good. Um, it doesn't say a range on it. So I'm guessing as long as they're in range, because it's when this card is played. So when either an allied Gamora or Nebula makes an attack, after the attack is resolved, both characters spend. The characters that did not make an initial attack, they make an attack targeting the same character. So I'm guessing it doesn't even matter if, let's say, Nebula's been, uh, has activated, Gamora comes up, doesn't finish off. Uh, doesn't say a non-activated character. That's interesting. I'll have to ask about that. Um, ask my local TOs. But I don't think... Please leave any comments in the section below. Um, it limits the other model who's already activated, for example. Because normally it would say, right? That's pretty nice. So if you really, really have to get a model off the table and you've left them on one wound, there's a chance that you could... And you certainly play this card if both of these characters are on the table. Situational, but quite nice. As long as they've got the range, and I guess it doesn't matter about activation tokens, they can make one more attack. Because it doesn't say one more attack, it doesn't say um, in their activation they get an extra attack. It literally just says can make an attack. Interesting to see, interesting to see. Shame about Medpack. But Doors of Cain is an okay card. It's an okay card. So, definitely interested in playing Gamora. Now that she's got a little bit more resilient and she is um, gaining the benefits of stealth, which is always nice. And they're just nice models. Plus, it helps my affiliation because at the moment I believe I only have five Guardians in my Guardians team. And you've got to collect them all, right? Right? Thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks for listening to me. Rabble on. Hope you're taking care of yourself, you wonderful, wonderful people, and have a very, very good Christmas.